it's not enough to just have a clear intention because clear intentions have very little effect on the nature of reality. Most people don't know that they're moving in and out of the quantum field 7.8 times per second. That you're vibrating in and out of the field all the time and every time you leave, you disappear and when you come back, you, come, you disappear into that field of information and you come back with information. But if you go out as the same person, you don't bring any new information back. Are you with me? If you look at quantum physics, the physics of possibility, it's really talking about the spiritual aspect of ourselves because you couldn't explain a miracle, you couldn't explain a biological process, you couldn't explain a simple healing of a cut at this point without understanding the quantum model of reality and that there are particles which are matter, it's you and I, and everything in this physical world, and then there's energy. And that energy has a consciousness, it has an awareness, and that energy is a field of information that we are an extension of, that we have access to, and that we spend so much of our life looking outside of ourselves instead of looking inside of ourselves and that we are really conditioned to look just for particles and matter instead of energy and information. And truly when people reach the end of their beliefs or they're facing crisis in their life, that's the moment they start to turn within and start to ask the bigger questions. And if you were astute enough to look at this in moments of contemplation, if you were wanting to hide God anywhere would be a good place to hide it would be within the human being because everybody's looking outside of themselves and we look for reasons to change and regulate our emotional states uh, you know we think that things and people and, and external things will really fulfill emotions that uh, uh, we're trying to change within us and that truly when we start to really investigate who we are and look to see how we do that and demystify it I think once we start to demystify it, it can become a skill. And so Einstein was a super cool guy because he spent a lot of time inward. And at 12 years old, he asked himself this simple question. If I ride my bicycle at the speed of light and I turn my lamp on, I turn my headlight on, will it go on? So he thought about that question every single day of his life, every day of his life. He would go out in a boat on a lake as a child and lay on, the, on, the, on, the ba on his back in the boat and look up at the sky and think about this. And he was building models of understanding. He was working his best to be able to figure out how light and energy were related. He did it for 10 years. He was possessed by the concept. And finally, he was working as a third-rate uh, clerk in a Swiss patent office. And he was watching this man fix the roof across the way. And he just paused for a moment, and he was watching him. And the moment he was watching him, he got this incredible vision. And he understood how light and energy were related. It was a very abstract vision. And it was so abstract and so dimensional that he had to go back to school to learn the mathematics to be able to explain what he saw. And his wife, his first wife, was an amazing scientist, and she helped him with a lot of the mathematics. And so when Einstein began to figure it out, he narrowed it down to that one simple equation that e equals mc squared, you know, energy and matter related, and the currency converter is the speed of light. And so it became very interesting because <clears throat> when Einstein published his papers on relativity, he didn't say like, hey, this person said this, and this person said this, and I'm gonna footnote this person, do that. He just said, ladies and gentlemen, this is how it is. And it rocked the scientific community because he didn't really need anybody else as a reference. He had a discovery, and his discovery was so unique. And his brain really was wired for the understanding of light, and light was the ceiling of this reality. You draw from this invisible field, and you turn it into chemistry. And the field around your body shrinks. How do I know? I measured it. And now you're more matter and less energy. You're more particle and less wave. And most people then 
When you are matter trying to change matter, you always try to force the outcome. You try to control the outcome. You try to predict the outcome. And people then get competitive or they hold on or they manipulate or they cheat or they steal because that's the only way they can get what they want. But the quantum model of reality, when you are truly in the present moment, and we've measured this in brain scan after brain scan, you forget that you're a woman. You forget your name, you forget your age, you forget your culture, you forget your past, you forget your future. If you forget that you have a body, you forget that you have parents. When you're truly in the present moment, you go from putting your attention on your body, your environment and time, to becoming nobody. No one, no thing, nowhere and no time. You become a thought alone in possibility. And if you are going to heal your body by thought alone, or change something in your life by thought alone, then you have to become thought alone. And teaching people how to linger in this place of the unknown is what begins to change their energy. We also measured when a person begins to open their heart and they can begin to sustain an elevated emotion. They begin to broaden the magnetic field around their body to nine meters wide. Now they're more energy than matter. They're more wave than particle. And they can exert better effects on reality. So then think of when you open your heart, this is science, like dropping a pebble in water. You produce a ripple. If you drop a bigger stone, you produce a bigger ripple. If you're able to sustain that state, you keep dropping the same rock over and over again and you broadcast a signature into the field. The emotion is the magnetic charge. Your intention, your thought, is the information that's carried on that wave. And when you combine a clear intention with an elevated emotion, you begin to produce an effect on matter. They did an experiment. They took a group of people that were expert prayers and healers. And they took three vials of DNA and they set them in front of them. And they said to these people, we want you with your mind, with your intention to see this DNA wind or unwind. And keep doing it over and over again with your mind. Close your eyes, just visualizing it, winding and unwinding, winding and unwinding. At the end of the experiment, they checked the DNA. Guess what happened? Nada. Nunca. Nothing. Nunca. Nothing changed. So then they said to these people, okay, now open your heart and feel gratitude, loving kindness. Create a feeling of goodwill and just generate this feeling into the field. And we want to see if it changes the DNA. Over and over again, they kept creating this loving feeling. Check the DNA. Niente. Nothing. The elevated emotion did nothing to change the DNA. It had no effect on matter. But when they said to those people, we want you to see the DNA unwinding in your mind, that's intention. Intention is getting clear on what you want. And we want you to give thanks ahead of the actual experience, as if the DNA unwound. 25% of the DNA unwound at a remote location. You see, the thoughts that you think are the electrical charge and create an equal. Now you're causing an effect. And I think that's the, the difference between living as a victim in your world saying, I am this way because of this person or that thing or this experience. They made me think and feel this way. When you switch that around, you become a creator of your world and you start saying, my thinking and my feeling is changing an outcome in my life. No, that's a whole different game and we start believing more that we're creators of reality.